Uh, we just finished the month of February. We finished the month down after the rally we saw in January. Uh, so let me find my notes here. Um, Jack, I'll put the first question to you. Uh, are we fading the rally here? Is, is the next move lower? Um, a lot depends on the data. Um, the fact is that, you know, most of the data that we've seen, obviously, is January data, much stronger than expected. It started with the jobs report, and it just kept coming at us uh, with inflation and then spending. Um, I will say, say that, you know, if the data weakens and it looks like the Fed will finally, you know, tap uh, on the brake a little bit or at least take their foot off the accelerator, uh, that would be an indication to say, okay, dollar lower, yields stable to perhaps lower, equities trend higher. Um, let me ask you, actually, Jack, I'm going to follow up because we, we don't talk enough about fixed income. And there's so much talk about murky guides here. I I'm looking at interest rates. I'm looking at fixed income. I'm looking at tax equivalent yield for certain types of funds. And I'm thinking, boy, you can perhaps get the equivalent of close to 9% right now if you're looking at muni funds. How should investors think about what kinds of risk they need to take and then what kinds of yield they can get outside of, uh, of that risk? Yeah, I mean, it's a great point, John. The fact is, I'm an asset allocator. I, I allocate capital, and if you think about it, bonds have really been fighting equities for the last 15 years with one arm tied behind its back. Um, so now that rates are s slowly gravitating toward fair value, uh, I, would, I would agree that over time we should see a migration of capital away from equities. A lot of it was just forced out there because there really was an alternative. And some of that is going to find its way back into uh, fixed income and income-oriented assets. Absolutely. Aaron, I want to bring you to this conversation. Now I've got my handy-dandy notes here. And one of the things you talk about is recency bias. What do you mean by that? And how is that driving the narrative we've seen play out so far to start the year in markets? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's very important to consider uh, where we came from to start the year. Uh, the S&P was up 6% in January, and we just gave back probably about half of that in February. If you go back to the tech bubble in early 2000, 2002, you saw very similar uh, activity amongst sort of the prior leadership of the market. That's really what we saw in January. You saw really five stocks drive more than half of the returns in the overall indices in January. So this is a knee-jerk behavioral reaction of investors to look at what worked last cycle. So I'm going to go back to those winners. Um, and, and in our view, the market's vastly different. A little bit of what Jack was talking about there was there's different alternatives in the market. So I think what really investors need to pay attention to is that risk now has a price in the market, right? There's alternatives to equities, and I think investors got pushed into equities. So in our view, the market is very different today than it was in 21, 2020. Uh, that's because risk now has a price. It costs money to okay. borrow money to buy stock on margin. So the, the environment's vastly different today, and we would take a different approach to the market today than in the past. Okay.